2023 has to be one of the best years for video games we've gotten in the last five or maybe even 10 years for gaming fans. So many games this year pushed boundaries further than they have been before and we're finally in an age of games where they're consistently reaching and exceeding their technical boundaries. In this video, I just wanted to take a moment to highlight and talk a little about my top 10 favorite games that I got to play this year. With that said, let's get into it. Sitting at number 10, I've got Diablo 4, one of the best looking action top down games that I've played in 2023. Going up against Lilith and fighting across all of Sanctuary was a ton of fun. Playing co-op with my buddy Soldier Bat is probably one of the better co-op experiences that I had in 2023. Combat was action packed, quick, and I loved every single build that I personally made while playing as a ranger. I never really went back to more to play more of the seasons, but either way, I had a great time when we did play, and that's why it's here. At number 9, I've got Street Fighter 6. As someone who never plays fighting games, I was really surprised with how Street Fighter 6 pulled myself and so many others in this year. I saw myself progressively getting better throughout the story mode, and I loved all the customization of creating your own character and mixing and matching mi moves from different characters. I never really got around to finishing the main story because it was a little bit of a grind and I wasn't the biggest fan of the RPG mechanics for gear score and stuff like that. But at the end, Street Fighter 6 was definitely a lot of fun and it was enough that it had an impact on me throughout the fighting genre as a whole. Next up, we got Starfield at number eight. I've always wanted another fully RPG story-based game set in space, especially today. We really don't get games like Mass Effect or even Fallout as often as I wish we did, and Starfield wasn't perfect, but it did have a ton of fun things, especially with the amount of replay value it has for new playthroughs, including New Game Plus. I would love to go back to this game, and it's something that I hope continues to get updates and quality of life improvements, because down the line, I think there really is something great for this game, but at the moment, I still think it needs a little, it needs to be cooked a little bit further. So with that said, that's why it's here. At number seven, I have Robocop Rogue City. This game came out of nowhere and was a complete surprise to me. I played their previous Terminator game, but I ended up putting it down because some of the stealth and other gameplay elements I really wasn't the biggest fan of. Robocop, on the other hand, I loved every second of it. And I'm, I'm not even a Robocop fan before at least. Starting out you feel like a tank then throughout most of the game you, you really do get stronger but enemies got tougher and your gun just got even better and better. I actually really liked how it even had dialogue options and simple skill upgrades too. It's definitely one of the best surprises of this year and that's why it's on this list. At number six I have Hogwarts Legacy. Now I've never really cared for Harry Potter or any of the movies really. Hogwarts Legacy I actually really enjoyed though. The combat was surprising surprisingly really smooth and the story was actually pretty good. It had some cool art RPG elements, it had tons of spells that you can learn and those tons of other customization options too. It really makes me want more games that have that bully kind of feel where you're a part of a school or organization and you're attending classes. But either way, Hogwarts Legacy was a ton of fun and that's why it's here. At number five, I have Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now this was my first time ever playing Resident Evil 4 and by the end of it, I completely understood why so many, many people love the original. Resident Evil 4 was definitely one of the best looking games that we got this year, and I'm happy that it didn't go overboard on jump scares for gameplay, because hey, I ain't all about that all the time. Just when I thought it was over, it kept on going, and honestly, I loved it either way. At number 4, I have Jedi Survivor. A new Star Wars game is always bound to land within my top 5 every year, but Jedi Survivor took Cal to places I didn't even expect. You really saw how much he's grown as a character and leader from Fallen Order, and he was not going to let anyone get in his way. The combat, the characters that you meet, everything about the game I really enjoyed during my time of playing it. The mechanics that they added towards the end of the story were really awesome too, and I was not expecting that, but it made me want to do an entire playthrough right from there over again. I didn't get to complete that second playthrough, but I would love to go back to it someday, or just looking forward forward to seeing where they take him next. At number three, we've got Final Fantasy 16. This game had to be 
one of the largest scale boss battles that I ever seen in a video game before. Every single fight was purely action packed and longer than a single chapter in Sun Game, some other games that we've seen this year. Every cinematic throughout the entire game looked beautiful and the story of Clive was a great one to see him grow. My biggest complaint about Final Fantasy 16 was it, it had a ton of unnecessary side missions that were required to play, but either way, I still loved it and the experience of the boss battles is why it's here in all honesty because of that. At number two, I've got Spider-Man 2. We finally got to see the story of the symbiote in a Spider-Man game made in modern day and holy, I loved every second of it. Seeing how brutal Peter was with the symbiote and how easily he took down enemies felt so good. I love seeing how Miles grew as a character and with his new abilities, they actually felt really good too. Venom was an absolute monster on screen and it was so badass seeing him every single second. Insomniac really know what they're doing when it comes to storytelling and gameplay and for that reason that is why it's right here. And for number one of 2023 we've got Baldur's Gate 3. This game has to be a game of a generation. I've played Baldur's Gate 3 since they released in early access and I loved it then and the full release made me love it all over again. I'm really not the biggest fan for strategy games or RTS, but something about turn-based games and a fully blown RPG pulls me in and captures me. The story, the character customizations, choices that actually matter, and the amount of replayability puts Baldur's Gate 3 on a scale that transcends something that can even be summed up in a game of the year video. This game will be played and loved for years to come because of the amount of quality and love that was put into it. And for that reason, it is my number one. So those are all of my games of the year, but I do have two little bonuses for you. First, I would like to say I really enjoyed the free Valhalla DLC for Ragnarok. What a surprise, especially as a free DLC and it had more story content than Modern Warfare 3's campaign. An absolute pleasure of a DLC to play and something that I really did not expect. Second was the Phantom Liberty expansion for Cyberpunk. Seeing it get its, its updates and everything and going back to play during 2.0 and then seeing everything else that they added in Phantom Liberty was actually a ton of fun. And if that was a full release in itself, it probably would have landed on this list personally. Overall, I think 2023 was one of the best years we've gotten for games in a very long time. 2024 so far is looking pretty good and I hope we get even even more surprises. For now, that's going to be it on this one. Keep a lookout for my next video on some of my most anticipated games for 2024. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and as always, thank you for watching.